Chapter Three of And Thus He Came by Cyrus Townsend Brady. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Three The Friend inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren is the story of the christ child true mommy quivered one little thin voice yes they told us it was over at the mission sunday school said the littlest child i don't believe it answered the mother god ain't never done much for me it's christmas eve ain't it asked the boy climbing up on the thin knees of the threadbare woman and nestling his thin face against a thinner breast which the rags scarcely covered decently yes it's christmas eve and that's the day he came ain't it urged the oldest girl they say so don't you believe it mommy i used to believe it when i was a girl i believed it before your father died but now don't you believe it now repeated the first child how can i believe it you're old enough to understand that's the last scuttle of coal we got we ate the last bit of bread for supper to-night they say put in the little boy that if you hang up your stockings santa claus will fill em cause of the christ child don't you believe it sonny said the mother desperately i'm going to hang up mine and see said the littlest girl he's got too many other children to look after said the woman to care for the likes of us i'm afraid and but my sunday school teacher said he came to poor people special he was awful poor himself why he was born in a stable that's awful poor ain't it asked the boy when i was a girl answered the mother i lived on a farm and we had a stable there that was a palace to this hole we live in now no you'd better not hang up your stockings none of you and you don't believe in him mommy no what would be the use if you hung em up and didn't find anything in em in the mornin it'd be awful but i believe in him said the littlest girl i don't think god has forgot us really i'm going to try i tell you tain't no use oh yes it is i'm sure it ain't but have it your own way said the woman if some one would fill your stockings with milk and bread and i want a turkey said the oldest girl and cranberry sauce added the boy i want a doll baby in mine said the littlest girl the mother hid her face and groaned aloud you ain't sick are you mommy i guess so come you'd better say your prayers and go to bed we don't have to keep the fire going so hard when you're all covered up it did not take long for the three little youngsters to divest themselves of the rags of clothing they wore they slept in what passed for their underclothes so there was no donning of white gowns for the night here are our stockings mommy said the oldest handing three ragged almost footless black stockings to the woman it's no use i tell you i can't do it it won't do any harm mommy urged the girl do you believe in it too asked the mother and the girl shook her head you won't be disappointed in the morning if there's nothing in them no i suppose it will be because santa claus was too busy with nervous fingers the woman hung the three stockings near the window she was hungry she was cold she was broken she was a mother she could scarcely keep from crying maybe you'll be glad you did it said the littlest girl drowsily ain't you comin to bed too mommy asked the oldest beneath the covers over the mattress on the floor in a little while and you won't forget to say your prayers i ain't said em for months ever since your father was killed and we got so poor but you'll say em to-night cause it's christmas eve yes to-night said the mother now you go to sleep are you waitin for him to come mommy asked the littlest girl who was very sleepy yes said the mother presently as she sat in the dark having turned out the light the deep breathing of the children told her they were asleep she rose quietly stepped to the window and stood looking at the three shapeless tattered stockings 
she was high up in the tenement and the moonlight came softly over the house roofs of the city into the bare cold cheerless room she stared at the stockings and tears streamed down her wasted cheeks she had hung them low at the suggestion of the littlest girl so the children could easily get at them in the morning after a time she fell down on her knees she pressed them against her face she did not say anything she could scarcely think anything she just knelt there until something gently drew her head around she dropped the stockings she put her right hand on the window ledge to steady herself and looked backward no sound save the breathing of the children and her own stifled sobs had broken the silence the door was shut but a man was there a man of strange vesture seen dimly in the moon's radiance yet there was a kind of light about his face she could see his features they were those of a man in middle years they were lined with care he had seen life on its seamy side the woman felt that he had known poverty and loneliness she stared up at him i don't believe she whispered it cannot be i thought we were forgotten the man slowly raised his hand the moonlight struck fair upon it she saw that it was calloused the hand of a man who toiled it was extended over her head there was no bodily touch but her head bent low down until she rested it upon her hands upon the floor when she looked up the room was empty there was no sound save the breathing of the children and the throb of her own heart which beat wildly in the fearful hollow of her ear she heard a sound of strange footsteps outside the door there was a crackle as of paper the soft sound of things laid upon the floor a gentle rapping on the panels a light laugh a rustle of draperies footsteps moving away as in a dream she got to her feet she knew not how she opened the door the hall was dimly illuminated her feet struck a little heap of joy-bringing parcels she leaned back against the door jamb her hand to her heart trembling what could it mean a tiny voice broke the silence it was the littlest girl turning over in her sleep murmuring incoherently and then clearly if you only believe that's enough if you only believe end of chapter three